exploring strange new worlds of collectibles, that is. Here's a look at the Toink Star Trek Collectibles Collector's Look-See Box. And I certainly hope this is not going to be a five-year mission as we explore the contents of the Star Trek Look-See Box. I picked this up over at Toink, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself. The price point on this is $47.99. And what does $47.99 get you? It gets you a Star Trek box with a whole bunch of mystery contents inside. Well, that's not 100% true. You may know what's inside because if you head over to Toink, they'll kind of give you a breakdown of what specifically are the contents in this. Uh, but certainly this is a great gift idea if you have a Trekker or Trekkie who's willing to admit it as a gift for a birthday or Christmas or some Star Trek related holiday that perhaps you and only you and your friends celebrate. We're going to go ahead and, like I said, we're going to get this opened up. This is the very first look-see box that I'm going to be opening up on this channel. And again, if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, $47.99, you can pick it up over on Toink's website. So we're going to go ahead and get this opened up. Obviously, what we're treated to immediately is the star field, and that's all the way around here. It does also have a handle, so if you want to pick this up and carry this on the go, you can certainly do that as well. But we're going to go ahead and open this up and to see what we got inside. Like I said, the website, for the, for the most part, kind of gives you an idea of the sort of stuff that you will expect to find this find inside. Obviously, if your friend isn't aware of where you pick this up, is only gonna just have the joy and the delight of being able to pull out all the trinkets, all the cool stuff that's inside, and you can kind of just sit from a distance and go ee! Okay, so first thing we're gonna have a look at, uh, a substantially heavy thing, this is a spacecraft of Star Trek, the spacecraft of Star Trek. It looks to be a wire bound, I'm just going to open this up, it's a notebook containing 200 lined sheets of paper. I'm just going to slide this out, there we go. And inside, like I said, I mean the front cover features various different ships. What is your favorite starship from uh, from the Star Trek universe? I would still have to say my favorite all-time star starship is uh, is the Enterprise A. It's actually interesting that they even have the Doomsday uh, that Doomsday ship. It always kind of looks like a corn snack. Borg cube, various Klingon ships, different Starfleet ships. Inside, though, you're really only treated to lined paper. However, it does feature the Star Trek insignia, insignia up at the top there, top corner. And uh, you get yourself 200 sheets of lined paper. Not bad. Good way to start. Uh, instead of actually just knowing what I'm pulling at, I'm just going to reach inside. Uh, we've also got ourselves a Make It So Star Trek The Next Generation little lunch tin. There's the underside of it right there. It's got a Captain Jean-Luc Picard featured on the front and actually on both sides here saying, make it so. Nice little, like I said, this is a teeny, teeny tins, lunch boxes, teeny tins. It has a little handle in there as well. Reach, 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 deep, deep, deep. Pull it out, the next one, a live long and prosper air freshener. It's apparently vanilla scented. I do smell vanilla, although most of it is encapsulated inside this plastic bag. There's Spock featuring his uh, his uh, ceremonial Starfleet outfit. It's going to when diplomats and whatnot, or uh, admirals and stuff, visit the Enterprise. He's usually wearing stuff like this. That's pretty cool, though. A nice little air freshener. I had no idea Vulcans smell like vanilla. Now you know. Everybody's like, I, I, you know, I had a, I suspected that Vulcans smelt like vanilla. Now I've got the confirmation. This is incredibly heavy. I'm not sure what this is, although I can kind of see it through the packaging. Again, I have a rough idea, but I didn't really want to see too much of what was the contents. I, I much rather the surprise than anything else. So I'm going to open this up. I'm assuming it's glass, and I think I know what it is now, even though I really haven't pulled much off thus far. My trusty knife, Old Red, is going to be assisting us in this. I must say they very much carefully packaged this. Cut this open. Scissors probably would be much a better friend for me right now. 
lots of tape. There we go. Get this all cut. Trying, of course, not to cut my fingers. I have no doctor present right now. All right. Get this all opened up. Take the bubble wrap off, finally, finally. There we go, there we go, all right. Uh, we've got ourselves some Star Trek uniforms, pint glasses, or tumblers, if you will. One side looks like it's heavily influenced by Star Trek The Next Generation. On the other side, heavily influenced by Star Trek The Classic Series. Always like myself pint glasses, or tumbler glasses, if you will. On the back, illustrated uniforms and props from Star Trek The Original Series and Star Trek The Next Generation. Set of two 16-ounce pint glasses. Hand-washed, recommended, not microwave safe. There you go. Comes to us from Co-op. TheCoopShop.com these are certainly what's probably making up the majority of the weight that's inside. I push forward with my venture, and we've got ourselves a Boinglers. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced, Boinglers. It's a dashboard accessory, and one of which being the original Starship Enterprise. If boinging is what this is, then boinging is what it's doing. It's sitting on a spring. Let's see if we can get this completely out of plastic. Right now, a small crew are inside this ship being jostled around. Several red uniforms, I'm sure, flying off in the background. There we go. Yeah, it's a little Starship Enterprise, NCC-1701. There it is on the top there as well. Actually, a really nice recreation of the Starship Enterprise, even for the fact that it's attached to a spring. It looks like there is an adhesive patch. You just peel that off, stick that to a dashboard. You got a little Enterprise flying around with you, hysterically, frantically flopping around while you're driving down the street. You probably even put that, well, you could probably even put that in your room. You could attach that to your arm. I mean, that will probably only work so long until you eventually have to wash. I would certainly hope that you would not di dismiss the idea of washing in favor of keeping an Enterprise stuck to your arm. So there's a couple of different places, of course, you can put that probably would consider putting that where I'm likely imagining it's intended to go. Mini replica NCC-1701 Enterprise Starship, peel and stick, permanent adhesive, base affixes to almost any surface. I guess including your arm, but again, don't dismiss the idea of personal hygiene. Uh, furthermore, inside we've also got a tin. And what's inside the tin? Oh, a little bit of plastic's already peeled off. This is actually officially licensed two black ink pens. Gonna open this up, take the wrap all off, open up the contents. Ooh, ooh, look at this. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Swashbuckling Sulu is sort of just floating around in the pen. There he is, he's sliding his way down. Sliding his way down. Doesn't seem much of a threat now. Oh, wait. No, he's not. He's changed direction. Watch it. Here he comes. Swashbuckling Sulu. Although he's not moving f as far down as, as he was moving further back. What's the other one here? This is Star Trek on the other side. What is that? Oh, is that the Gorn? That is the Gorn. Is the Gorn moving? Look at the Gorn. He's moving. Back. Forward. Back. I'm not going to do this all day. It would be also very cool if they had put a little Starship Enterprise in there with the Starfield. I mean, I would just be doing this all day. Despite that, I'll probably still find myself doing this all day. Work? Pfft, who needs work? I've got this. I can do just back and forth. Back, forth. Gorn. It's back and forth. There we go. Who needs to make your own gunpowder? You just You just tilt the pen. There goes the Gorn. See, he's not much of a threat anymore. By the way, they are also pens, so how do they open? Oh, you just turn the end. There you go. Turn the end. Uh, there we go. They are working pens. Pretty neat looking pens. I think my dad had a pen like this, but it was Elvis. I'm a big Elvis fan. Little things was moving around on. I think Elvis's torso moved around. I don't remember. Uh, and then what else we have in here? A couple other things. I'm going to actually pull out everything now, and then we can just kind of examine it together. 
We have a movie era captain rank pin. Ooh, that's nice. Open that up. There's the pin right inside. It is of a metal variety. Feels like it's metal. Flip it around. Onovos. Oh, Onovos. Onovos. I think they actually make the Star Trek uniforms right now. I don't know if it's Anovos. Anovos. I don't know. There's what it looks like right there. Like I said, it does feel like it's metal. It's got two pins on either side. So you can attach that to your lapel. Attach that to a jean jacket. If you have a nice vest and you want to go out on the town, jack up a little bit. You've got that available. And uh, just to kind of show you, get that tucked back in. Comes with a card. Here's the card looks like. Yeah, see, it would be right there. Right there. Almost, almost exactly right there. This is to certify that this movie era Captain Rank pin is an authentic prop replica produced by Anno Vos. Again, pronunciation pending. Under license from CBS Studios, Inc., recreated from archival material of the original filming prop as screen as seen on screen in the movie Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. How about that? So we'll put that back in because I certainly don't want to get that damaged. Oops. Get that tucked back in. There we go. There we go. All right. We also have... This is the Star Trek 50th Anniversary Collectible Pins. I don't know if there's pins in there or just a pin. This also comes to us from the, the co-op. Uh, there is a perforation, so I don't need a knife. I'll just open that up. And inside we have one singular pin. And that is of Brent Spiner, Commander Data, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Data. Lieutenant Commander Data? I think it was Lieutenant Data. How many blips does he have? It's three. So that's uh, the Lieutenant Commander. Lieutenant Commander Data. It's been a while since I've watched Star Trek Next Generation. It's always one of those things that are on TV and I flip to it kind of mid-episode. I watch a little bit and I flip the channel again. I was a big fan of Star Trek Next Generation. But like as Star Trek is so readily available... Anywhere that you can, I mean, anytime you flip to a channel, you're sooner bound to find a Star Trek episode kicking around in there. Decent looking pin, I have to admit. And uh, these are some of the other various ones that we can get. There's a tricorder, there's the Starship Enterprise, Ohura, of course, Spock, and Worf. Also included inside was a Star Trek The Next Generation Borg Puzzle Cube. A solution is futile. You know what? It is probably quite futile. I'm never good at solving these little Rubik's Cubes. Here's what it looks like. The hardest part, I guess, would be for this is I don't think it's intended to be solved because really none of the patterns look like they line up with one another. I can't ser simply just follow one line and it goes all the way around, connects all the way. Oh, that's how it forms. I mean, you could just... Do this at a party. Stop for a second. Take a deep fried pickle. And just say, there, it's done. Somebody would pick it up and say, wow, you you did. You finished all of it. But again, I don't think it has a finishing, a starting point, an ending point. I guess really some of these do connect to one another. So this one here, this little colored section of gray. But a neat looking little puzzle box of course, of the uh, the Borg cube. We also got an, ourselves another lunch tin. A head warp factor one, says Captain Kirk. I don't know if he realizes that he's inside a small force field, only a few inches off of his actual body shape. And that's what it looks like on the other side. It also comes to us from Teeny Tins Lunch Boxes and is of a small metal tin variety with a little plastic handle. There was the Kirk, there was the Picard, both captains. And I think that's it. That is it. A pretty good substantial box. Like I said, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, uh, you can find it over on Toink. Uh, Toink's got a whole bunch of these look-see boxes, some ranging from a comic. Uh, this one here was, of course, Star Trek. I wanted to try the Star Trek, being a big Star Trek fan myself. I think some of my favorite things in this box were probably the pin. Uh, I'm always a big sucker when it comes to pint glasses, so I do like the pint glasses. I would even be hard-pressed to find the weakest thing in this box, even like the pens. For the fact that they have motion to it and that I can 
tilt back and forth swashbuckling chest shirtless Sulu, I think makes up for the fact that uh, they're just ballpoint pens. Probably the least exciting would be the puzzle box, the uh, Rubik's Cube, simply just because I, I stink, <laughs> suck at the Rubik's Cube. But uh, like I said, if you guys are interested in picking up one of these look -see boxes for yourself, you can pick them up, of course, for yourself. But I think they work better as gifts for somebody. Even though we've kind of passed Christmas, I know that's even a bad word now to be talking Christmas, and it's not even the end of February, but if an upcoming birthday, for example, or if you want to celebrate a made-up, made, made up, make believe Star Trek holiday, you can certainly do that as well and get this for your favorite Trekkie or Trekker, if they're not willing to call themselves a Trekkie, uh, this really cool look -see box. Like I said, $47.99 over on uh, Toink, and uh, Toink has got a variety of different look -see boxes. Today we were doing an unboxing of the Star Trek look -see box, and we had a look -see at what was inside the Star Trek box. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below, my friends, my colleagues of the interweb, soon future videos, not soon future into the realm of Star Trek The Next Generation, but future, future unboxings and other reviews will be coming soon to this channel, so make sure you stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.